Good evening and welcome to the February 19th, 2014 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz and we'll begin the meeting by having the clerk call the roll of the school committee. Present. 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 Thank you very much. And now we'll move into the public comment period. And we have uh, one person who signed up to speak. And um, if you could just identify yourself uh, as well as your address uh, for the record. And uh, uh, the floor is yours for three minutes. Thank you. My name is Camille Kamak. I live at 38 Paris Lane in Northampton. My partner, Denise and I, Denise Ives and I, are the parent of a fifth grader, Jackson Street Elementary, Adam Ives. And I'd like to just read a letter that I've written to um, Regina Nash, interim superintendent of Northampton Public Schools, Gwen Agnes, principal at Jackson Street Elementary, and Nick Ames, fifth grade teacher at Jackson Street Elementary, who, by the way, is fabulous, um, from us. Uh, this is to inform you that our child, Adam Ives, will be attending school between March 24th and April 11th, 2014, but will not be taking the park pilot test. Our child is opting out of the park testing for the following reasons. We oppose the testing on moral grounds. We do not support our child donating four to six hours of his fifth grade education to the field testing of a test produced by a for-profit corporation, Pearson. We believe that asking children to take the park pilot test in addition to the MCAS testing creates an unreasonable testing burden on children who are already spending excessive amounts of their school time preparing for and taking high stakes standardized tests. There is no educational value in taking the park test and yet it is embedded in the regular school day robbing children of instructional time. We believe the move to park testing furthers the agenda of using high stakes standardized tests to evaluate schools, teachers and children. We believe this move has damaging consequences to children in schools and is built on the false promise of improved education. We believe the use of for-profit corporations to develop, administer, and score high-stakes testing further opens the door for corporate interests rather than public interests to drive education. Finally, we appreciate the tireless work of our local educators to provide high-quality education for our children. We understand the pressures and constraints of the current socio-political climate around schooling. However, we feel it is time to take a stand as parents against what we believe are destructive trends in educational practice. Respectfully, Camille Kamek and Denise Ives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that copy being sent to me or do I get a copy in the um, And you'll be submitting that, <clears throat> submitting that letter to the superintendent directly or do you want to leave a copy with us tonight? Or? I can leave a copy with you. I have a copy. Okay. Sure, if you want to do that, that'd be great. You can give it to the clerk or, or yeah. thank you very much. So um, that's the only person who signed up for public comment. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in public comment this evening? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to announcements. Are there any announcements from the school committee? Okay, um, hearing none, uh, we will now move on to a, uh, a special presentation um, for our agenda this evening. We are. Uh, very excited to have some members of the cast of The Music Man, uh, which is directed by uh, Barbara Allen and uh, is happening at Northampton High School. And they are going to entertain us here briefly with a selection from The Music Man. So welcome and come on up to the microphone. And maybe you could all introduce yourselves and let us know your, what year you're in. And um, So hi. Yeah. So we are the Barbershop Quartet from The Music Man. Uh, and I guess we run down the line. Uh, I'm Jake Hill. I'm a senior. Um, I'm Danny Loriano. I'm a sophomore. I'm Luke Bosco. I'm a sophomore. And I'm Bobby Tosswell. I'm a senior. Nice framed frame four. Um, yeah, so one of the more iconic pieces from The Music Man. <laughs> Sorry about that. that was sorry. School's out? I'm sorry. Oh, that, was the, <laughs> that was the three minute timer from before, so. <laughs> we can just go, it's fine. <laughs> sorry. Um, but one of the more iconic pieces uh, of, you know, of the Music Man besides, you know, 76 that we got is Light of Rose. Um, and so we tonight have planned 
to entertain you with said <laughs> music. Obviously, I'm not a public speaker. I'm sorry. Um, right. He's waiting for that sort of like open-ended forum talk. Right, so yeah. It's you know, just that's the thing. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, me good? Yeah. Okay. That's no no. There we go. Three, four, one. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose, to get the sun back in the sky. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose, about a thousand kisses shy. Ding dong, ding, I can hear the chapel bell chime. Suggestion, I'll pop the question. Light a rose, I'm home again, rose, without a sweetheart to my name. Light a rose, now everyone knows that I am hoping you're the same. So here is my or fine I a rose oh won't you be mine light a rose oh light a rose oh light a Thank you. Do you do you want to tell for the folks at home wh wh what the schedule is for the Music Man? Um, so the Music Man is going to be four or what is it? Four shows, right? Four shows. Four shows yeah. on yeah. three different days. So it's March thirteenth at seven, March fourteenth at seven, March fifteenth uh, for two o'clock matinee, and then again at seven o'clock that night. And yeah. right. smaller plug: our local representative of Northampton High, Dylan <laughs> Weaver, is also in said musical. We're all, it's, it's a big conspiracy. It's we a big conspiracy. We're all involved. In it's, okay. it's, yeah, it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should also acknowledge Barbara Allen. Yes, we yes. Who's yes. our director. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. All right. Have fun with counting stuff. Okay, well, um, on that uh, great, great start, that note, um, we will now take up the consent agenda. These are the um, items recommended uh, on our consent agenda for, for your action this evening. Um, we have the approval of the minutes of the school committee meeting of January 9th, 2014. Um, we have a contract uh, for um, Health Master. These are for upgrades to the student health information system. Uh, that's for $10,250. And we have a field trip request, and this is the JFK Wright Flight Program uh, going to the New England Air Museum in Windsor Lock, Connecticut on March 3rd, 2014. So if I could have uh, a motion, okay. Is there a second to approve the consent agenda? Second. Okay. So all those in favor of approving tonight's consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the consent agenda is approved, and uh, we will now uh, move to reports and recommendations. And our first report this evening is from our student representative, uh, the aforementioned Dylan Weaver. Hi everyone, it's nice to see you despite the nasty weather. This is, at least among the people that I see routinely, all these snow days and the nasty weather has spurred discussion of global weirding as opposed to global warming. Um, so I guess that's the silver lining. Um, it's been a great year to be a senior so far with all the vacations bookended by multiple snow days, um, but irrespective of the cataclysmic weather, um, us seniors have had our hands full. Just last week we got uh, measured for our graduation caps and gowns. Um, so 
the this coupled with the fact that we're going into our second semester and we're kind of now just settling into those classes um, there's been a lot of graduation excitement among the senior class everyone at, everyone at NHS not only the seniors have been settling into their second semester nicely with um, the sending of the checks for the AP AP tests um, reminding everyone that there's a light at the end of the tunnel um, it was actually a, a pleasant surprise for all of the NHS families that the normal cost of $95 was taken down to $89, which doesn't seem like tons, but my, 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 my parents were happy. Um, and although it, it, there was also then discussion amongst the class about um, costs of AP classes and also classism, so just lots of discourse lately. Um, our swim team placed in the third, placed third in states for Massachusetts. Um, and Katie Helly was the Western Mass champion in diving. And our own Anna Walter made her 1,000th 1, 1, 1, point in basketball. So just along with the fact that um, there was an incredible student production of Crimes of the Heart um, that the director, Emma Halper, a really good friend of mine, pulled together and presented to the school despite seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Um, there's really a lot of positivity in NHS right now. I mean, second semester, we're all seeing the summer at the far end. Um, but despite that, just recently, um, it was a real huge shock to our school. A really, really amazing teacher, a phys our physics teacher, um, Miss Johnson, um, had to quit because she wasn't, she went on sabbatical last year um, to have a child and uh, she's just coming back this year. It's really, really amazing. I took some physics last year and I'm really sad I missed out on her. Everyone loves her. But we're really sad that she's, she's having to quit because she's not getting paid enough to pay for childcare and have enough money to live and have a life. Um, so right now, her student uh, teacher from Smith is teaching all the classes, but that's, that's a real blow among all the positivity that we're having. We're really sad to see her go. That's it. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is relates to our, our annual requirement um, relative to school choice participation. And so I'll, um, and this will be a, a presentation from the superintendent that will then be followed up by a required uh, vote of the school committee. So I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Sure. Um, I think that um, Jennifer Tyler, who's the coordinator for school choice, sent with the packet of information a background on school choice. Um, I won't read it to you, but basically you've been a member um, of approving school choice since September of 1997. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty important process for Northampton because we have this year 214 students who are school choiced in, um, and that's 7.7 percent of our total student population. Um, it does a couple of things. Um, first of all, it, having school choice students coming to us offsets the number of school, school choice students going to other districts. Um, so that's important and it also obviously brings revenue into the district. So um, we sent you various um, documents, um, one of which indicates that um, at this point we'd be looking at um, opening approximately 67 positions for school choice, seats for school choice. Um, and you can see the previous years that we've opened more than we've been able to fill. The reason for that is usually students really wish to do school choice and their parents um, at the beginning of school, kindergarten, first grade, when we change again to grade six and again to grade nine. So even though we have openings at the other grade levels, we seldom have them all filled. Um, so this evening we're looking for uh, approval of school choice. Uh, and, and I'm also looking for some additional flexibility. Um, what I'd like the amendment of the, um, the wording to be is basically um, to include the fact that the final determination will be with the principals. And the principals will be working with Jennifer Towler, who's the coordinator for school choice, um, which would provide them more flexibility and also provide them um, with the fact that there wouldn't need to be an additional school committee meeting in order to adjust the numbers. 
And what I mean by that is, you know, we lined up specific grade levels and numbers in each of those, and those may change um, between now and the start of school. Um, so if we're confined to only these numbers, we may very well miss out on some students we could take um, because we've had more of our students leaving than we know of at this point. So um, that's basically it. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you may have. I think Jennifer did a great job, as she usually does, putting together the statistics for you. Ms. Minnick. Um, just a point of order, if, if memory serves, the law states that we're participating unless we move, unless we vote not to. So I think that traditionally our vote has our, our motion has been not to participate and then everyone votes no, which means that we then are participating, but it's an affirmative action on our part to not opt out. To not, yes. And typically you don't have a negative motion, but it, it, if this one seems to be the one that every year we do this crazy thing and the wording is which, bizarre. Yeah, which actually doesn't make much sense. <laughs> it doesn't. I, I, I think really, if you're not going to participate, you need to vote not to participate. If you are going to participate, you vote to participate. Um, yeah. Well, either either one accomplishes the same action. So, like um, Ms. Duvall, did you have a? I do. I have a question. I have a question. Um, I'm not sure how many of you received a letter from a teacher um, whose child participates um, school choice, and I'm not sure if now's the time. I brought it up before with the previous superintendent, and it never actually went anywhere. Now um, this teacher has put forth, it was when I had actually, she went and talked to me at the time, and now she has put forth um, a request about school choice regarding busing, and I understand that we're voting to whether or not we're going to have school choice or not, but I just want to make sure I don't miss the opportunity, if this is the opportunity to, to say that we can re-examine or take it to policy or something, the busing situation, I just don't know if now's the time or not. I just don't want to lose that opportunity. If I could, um, that was not really an issue with school choice and busing from the person's home to the school. It was right. a request for busing between two schools. The matter's been taken care of. Okay. Thank you. No. So if there's no other, I'd like to uh, make a motion to um, not change how we are. <laughs> I'm not sure. And not change I'm not our participation. Sure. I'm not sure that's the motion. What's the motion, Lisa? You want to make the motion? Yeah, uh, yeah you make it. Well, I, I move that we not withdraw from school choice. Second. Okay. From participation in school choice for the coming fiscal year. So that kind of splits the the needle there between the two. Withdraw. Okay. We not withdraw. Okay. Okay. I see. So then that means that an affirmative vote means we continue with. Um, so voting yes means we continue with school oh, choice. Yes, that was that was split. You're right. Yes. 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 Yeah, so it could be an affirmative vote. Yes. So if people can actually vote yes, meaning yes, stay in school choice. Okay. Um, and that's been seconded. Yes. Uh, okay. Great. Is there any further discussion about that I question? I would ask if you are amenable to adding the rest of that. Um, or is that a second motion you'd like to do? It's fine. I think the question was regarding allow. So this vote we're, we're <coughs> continuing, and then you'd like and a follow-up. Yes. We'll just do something to keep it clean. Okay. So all those in favor of the continuation uh, of the motion on not the table, withdrawing. not withdrawing, <laughs> uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the ayes have it, and 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 then I guess we would ask a follow-up. Did you want a, a did you want to include a numerical number in that, as it, as if we're approving a certain number of seats, or I, I would ask um, that you approve a a larger number than the 67. Although I don't think we're going to ever reach 67, but if you might say 70, with the final de determination being um, uh, with the principals. Okay, and see what happens. So, I, so the requested motion is to approve the allotment of 70 school, up to 70 school choice slots, uh, with the, f with the, uh, f I don't know, uh, the distribution to be determined in, in consultation with the principals. Right. Something that would be the motion. And not affecting class size. I mean, we'll have a, it, it's yeah, capped, I think that's what, based yeah. on it. Okay. Yeah. Just it will to clarify. Class size, but they will make those decisions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure, yeah. So if someone would want to make that motion. Um, so moved. Seconded. Okay. 
um, any discussion on that motion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the ayes. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I just, I, I should have made this back when we were discussing the original motion, but can I just go ahead and state for the, because we have new members on this board, I think it would be appropriate to point out that back in 1990, whatever you said, 97, when we, when the school committee first elected to do this, the monies that came into the district from school choice were spent for one time purchases that were considered to be not luxuries, but something additional to our regular budget. In the intervening 15 plus years, the school choice funds have become first uh, things that weren't luxuries, then things that were actually recurring expenses. Mm -hmm. So now we rely actually quite heavily on school choice funds to balance our budget. And so I just I think it's important for us to understand that if uh, it's unlikely that the number of school choice students would change dramatically that they would all just suddenly have a mass exodus but I, I just want to remind everyone that it is an unpredictable income stream to the extent that we open up 70 seats we could get two people that agreed to come we would still have the revenue from the ones that exist in our district that remained here and once they come here, they're ours for as long as they choose to stay here. Um, and, and I should also say that our schools do a great job of not differentiating. Those, those students become part of the school committee community, even if they aren't part of the residential community. They are involved in everything. They are our students. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I, I think, I just want to make the statement so that everyone's aware that this is you know, we the state put us in a position where we felt like this was an important thing for us to participate in because it provides options for parents and students, because it provides convenience for some people. It allows people who move mid-year to have an option of, of continuing in a certain school if they wanted to. But it is a questionable sort of funding mechanism from the state. and. So I just thought that it would be important to explain that if you weren't already aware of it. And I'm sorry if I'm talking down to you and you all completely understood that. <laughs> but okay. Thank you. Um, I was worried when you said they all joined the school committee because I thought that might keep our numbers <laughs> down for school choice. Um, so, uh, so I'm not sure if we actually voted. So let me ask all those in favor of that, of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, okay, so that, that second follow-up motion has been accepted. Um, we now move on to a change in NHS graduation requirements, which I'll turn it back over to the superintendent to explain. Um, I've been working with the high school administration with regard to um, some areas that they would like to see changes in. One of them is with regard to the high school graduation requirements. Uh, we're not looking to change the total number of credits that students need in order to graduate, but we are looking to change one of the requirements, and that's the writing course uh, for the freshman year. Um, there's v many reasons for that. We've supplied uh, four, actually five or six are included in here. Um, first of all, the freshman class students really have very little flexibility for doing anything other than the required courses. Um, they're also, um, by putting the writing into um, all of the hybrid ninth grade English courses, we're going to be emphasizing the analytical writing and the close reading and study of literature. So we're not doing away with writing, we're incorporating it into the regular freshman English class. Um, that will result in smaller classes which will be beneficial in terms of more individualized help with writing. Um, it will provide greater flexibility in scheduling and it will open up elective courses in English. And there was a young man who was here, I think a couple of meetings ago, who spoke of the importance of journalism. So uh, some of the courses that um, teachers have expressed an interest in and would allow them to teach um, would be such things as journalism, creative writing, gender studies, the graphic novel, Irish literature, science fiction and fantasy, et cetera. So uh, 
teachers would really like to do this as well to broaden the course courses that they are teaching um, and um, really one of the major points is we're doing this without additional teaching staff We need to make better use of what we have because we know that we have a situation where it's not easy to add teaching staff uh, this will provide that flexibility um, as I wrote to you earlier um, this is something that's been um, looked at by um, the guidance uh, department, the English teachers, the school council, um, and every and administration, and everyone's in favor of doing this. Um, and as I said, it doesn't change the number uh, total number of credits uh, required. It just takes away that one. Um, it also is is being covered. Um, by the Common Core in that the Common Core uh, has the expectation that writing is not just in English, it's also in science and math and social studies. Be happy to respond to any questions that you may have. I would also say that Brian Lombardi, um, the principal, um, was planning to present this. Uh, unfortunately, we had to change our meeting date and he had other arrangements to be out of town this week. Uh, but I have met with him on several occasions along with press Chris Brennan, the associate principal, and um, they've supplied me with a lot of information and uh, I've been very pleased with um, the thoroughness of which they've looked at doing this. So if you have questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Are there any questions about this? Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, on the surface and on the face of it, it seems actually to be quite wonderful. My question, I guess, would be, we have a curriculum subcommittee. How come something like this, I mean, are, are we on a time rush? I mean, why did all of a sudden it, it kind of pop up, and why wasn't it referred to the curriculum subcommittee? Because I don't think they've even met in a year or so, and it was one of the issues that we had talked about prior to, to you taking over as the superintendent, um, was that whether or not to keep the curriculum subcommittee or not. And to me, this right here would seems exactly uh, what they would do, well, the preview I of what they would that do. In sort of three different ways, if you'd like. Um, number one is the factor that there is a um, reason to do this sooner rather than later, and that's because we're looking to print the um, course booklets. Mm -hmm. um, and How long have we been scheduling. thinking about this? Uh, I started meeting with um, Brian uh, right after Christmas. Okay. So it was in January. Secondly, uh, I did talk with um, the chair and the vice chair um, with regard to this issue. Uh, at that point, we had a curriculum committee that was going to be changing. Um, and I've not really worked with committees before. And unless someone tells me that this is what I have to do, um, I have no idea that I should be doing it. Because frankly, it's just twice the amount of work because really the decision is up to the entire school committee with regard to whether this happens or not. So, Which is a whole thing, I mean, as far as whether or not we were going to have a curriculum committee or not have a curriculum committee. I don't know. But if I wasn't we did, part of that discussion. I know, but we, but we decided, I mean, you appointed, the mayor appointed um, people to a, a curriculum committee, so we still have the curriculum committee is what I'm assuming. So the thing that I'm looking at is, I mean, I can understand if you didn't understand or know, but this doesn't seem like something that just all of a sudden popped up and I mean I understand now it needs to be rushed and looked at quickly but it really to me just seems like it's definitely in the purview of, of what a, a, that committee is designed to do and if it indeed is that we're reiterating to one committee and then having to approach it to the whole committee then maybe that's just what that that committee is designed to do. I'm not on it. I'm on rules and policy, so I don't know. But I do know that it was discussed, and this right here just seems perfect for that. Mrs. Minnick. Um, yes and no. I would say that if this were a request to add something or to change a curriculum or to take away and not offer social studies or something, it would absolutely be something that would go to the curriculum subcommittee. This seems to be a very explicit, distinct, specific request regarding graduation requirements for the high school. It's less about curriculum because they've already explained that writing across the curriculum is part of the core curriculum which we're adopting and that we will, that they will be incorporating the writing, um, 
requirements into basic English classes that are offered to freshmen. So I don't see this as saying we're going to, you know, like, we're going to start teaching writing before we teach reading, so we need to know what you think about that. This is not like a huge, uh, if you follow what I'm saying, this is not some kind of like big I follow shift. I exactly what you're saying, it, and it makes sense to me in, too. Yes. But, but it does also do seem also that if there's a committee, that's what it's for. That's what it, I mean, it just seems to me that. I think, I think the curriculum committee would be where they would bring something that they wanted to discuss at length and debate and maybe have sent back for further research and then it comes back to the curriculum committee. And if you recall, when, uh, over the last several years, the rules and policy committee has met and the budget committee has met, but the curriculum committee has not met exactly. for the simple reason that everybody wants to know what's going on with curriculum and we've gone ahead and had people, even when we're making a change to the math curriculum, we had them come in and make their presentation to the full school committee as a whole. So for that reason, I, I'm not going to I do understand that. And I think we should. I think then at some point we should revisit whether or not we need that curriculum. I think we do need to keep a curriculum committee. That would be my thought on that. But I don't think that this necessarily needed to go to it. And I think that we can let the superintendent make the decisions coming forward now that she knows that one exists. That sounds fine to me, Mr. Vice Chairman. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to seek a little bit more clarification. Okay. Um, so this is the ninth grade mm -hmm. writing yes. course. Yes, uh, correct. And I guess because I have a ninth grader myself, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm trying to understand it a, a little bit more clearly because my recollection or my understanding of this ninth grade course is that in the eighth grade down here in the middle school, they take a test mm -hmm. and if they exempt mm -hmm. out, then as a ninth grader, they don't have to take the writing course. Right. So it's not every student that's taking the writing course at right. the ninth grade. It's okay. those that have been identified here at the, at the middle school as needing some extra remediation or help in writing with what I would imagine would be um, um, a look towards the 10th grade, grade MCAS in, in writing. And so um, I guess I have a little bit of mm -hmm. a concern if this program uh, that's been designed, implemented at the high school, was done so because there was a need for students to increase their writing skills. And now um, are we to assume that um, with the infusion of it into the curriculum in the ninth grade, we should continue to maintain um, the high standards that maybe we're seeing because of this writing program that some students are going through in the ninth grade, or could we expect to see a drop? Should we, should we, I mean, it seems like, it seems like it's in place for a reason, and mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like we're taking it out, and I haven't heard the argument that we're going to remove it because our students are writing much better, we're having great success. Mm -hmm. It seems to be that it's scheduling, we're having trouble getting students to take other electives, and because of that, we're willing to back this out, but is it still a strong necessity for some students? I'd like to respond to that. First of all, there were, this year, um, there were 57 students who were waived of the requirement to take it. There were an additional 40 students who were identified by teachers based on their performance in writing classes this year who shouldn't have been taking it. Um, so that adds up to 97 out of the 220 students who shouldn't have been taken in the first place. Um, the idea is that with the writing being infused across the curriculum, with the fact that the English classes will become smaller, that this makes more options available for the students, and it reduces the size of English 9, which will allow for more individualized time between student and teacher for assistance and help. Um, having flexibility in what the English department offers will not only allow for more robust elective offerings, but also allow for remedial support classes as needed. So that was a consideration yeah. of the English department in looking at this. I'm just, I'm just concerned about any negative mm -hmm. effects it might have on some students because now they're taking a course that's strictly um, designed to help them be better writers because it's a writing course and now putting it into the ninth grade and I realize there'll be some emphasis on more writing but it won't strictly be um, 
uh, 20 weeks of just writing for these students. Well, I remember in college even mm -hmm. at UMass being mandated to take a writing course as a junior because mm -hmm. 20 plus years ago they identified writing as being a very strong skill that they wanted each graduating uh, student to have and it seems like we have it in our, our program studies here at the high school. We're backing it out. I'm concerned about what the, the future implications mm -hmm. might be. That's all. And I, and I don't think we are backing it out. What we'll be able to do is provide the remedial for those kids who really need the remedial and not for all of these kids who don't need it. So I think it will actually strengthen um, a program for those kids in need. Are there other um, questions? Um, I can just add, uh, I, I, I sort of, I've sort of experienced the full spectrum of this because I had a, uh, my oldest daughter was required to take it in ninth grade and I, I, I suspect she was one of those kids that um, probably didn't need to take it and, it's, and it created, it was a course that she sort of had to take. My, my, my youngest daughter waved out of it because that was then an option um, and so I sort of see this now as uh, I can sort of understand the rationale for it, um, particularly if we're going to be able to allow more course offerings for, for those, however, 220 okay. kids that may want to move right into a more advanced course or branch out into a different course. So, this uh, is My concern would only be, and I'm not even sure I would use the word concern, I would say that the students who need the writing class mm -hmm who have the option of taking electives that require writing may opt to take other things. And so I'm glad to hear you say that there's a remedial class because I would be concerned that if a student who needs extra help uh, writing um, got some work at, you know, with the other core classes, but then somehow could choose another elective that was not writing intensive um, and kind of weasel out of it for a kid that really might need it. So I appreciate that the remedial, and I'm, I'm actually just wondering, would that be a ninth grade class, the remedial? Well, it's remedial support in terms of the fact that there would be um, perhaps ESPs, et cetera, but there would be some remedial support for those kids who need it in their regular English classes. Um, that would be up to the English department and the administration to see how that was actually structured. But I'm sure we're not looking to um, um, do anything other than to make sure that we maintain the quality of the writing that we have in our students. And actually, I think this will improve it, um, simply because we'll have smaller classes and those kids who really need the help will be able to get the help. Thank you. I, I'm not quite sure about the, the smaller numbers. If I just need the math on this. 97 students is this right? Didn't have to take it last no. year. Fifty-seven students did not have to take it. Okay. Um, there were another forty students identified the teachers um, taking the course that they felt did not. Need oh, they did to not take. need to. Right. And so, what was the total taking it last year, or this um, year rather? Two hundred and twenty. So two hundred and twenty. So adding. So if we take that class away and add electives, how will that? make English classes, because the ninth grade English classes, smaller? First it says we propose the elimination of the freshman writing mm -hmm. graduation requirement. In its place we will create a new hybrid ninth grade English class that will emphasize both analytical writing and the close reading and study of literature. Yep. The number of credits required to graduate will remain the same. And under the further point, the <coughs> Common Core and the 2011 English framework certainly emphasize writing standards in English classrooms. However, they also include writing standards for history, social studies, science, and technical subjects. <coughs> it is our intention and our responsibility to guarantee a writing program that is fully integrated throughout the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So the writing in these other courses as well. Mm -hmm. So students who need some additional help in writing maybe get that help mm -hmm. in their courses. Okay. Ms. Minnick? Could I'm not sure, you, did she answer your no. question? No. Not exactly. How about this? If you take 220 yes. students that are taking those classes and you say 30, 30 per class yeah. average, that's seven sections. Right. And how many electives are you going to add? I'm, I'm curious. Oh, so I'm, what, she's, no. what they're saying is then you, yeah. you can have those, the teachers at those seven sections, mm -hmm. so maybe you can have them teach, um, half of them are going to teach 
these new English electives yep. maybe, and the other half are going to now teach a section of freshman English. I get it. And so what you end up with is instead of having 60 kids in the required freshman English class, now you're going to have 40 or 45 kids in the freshman okay. or, or 30 kids in the freshman English class if you have enough sections. Okay. And that's what they're talking that's about. That's where the smaller. smaller. That's where the smaller class size comes from because you have more teaching. Mm -hmm. Who were able to do that? Available to right. teach the English. Class. Sorry, I didn't understand. No, that's okay. I wasn't clear in my question. But did that get it? Yes, it did. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Thank probably. you, Lisa. Can we ask our resident senior what he thinks of this? Oh my goodness. <coughs> well, I was unfortunate enough to. Um, I unfortunately didn't get a writing teacher enough. The Mr. Brennan, who's uh, an amazing teacher. I actually have another class with him, but everyone loves him. Um, he was out that year, and so a different teacher that came in is not usual, but I hated my writing class. I am a, I pride myself on one of the few academic spheres of things that I'm really good at. I'm, I'm a pretty great writer. Um, and um, I, I hated the writing class. There were definitely, definitely, I totally understand your, your, your um, concerns. There were like three people probably in the class of 15, 20, um, who, who needed to be there. But there were a lot of people three or four of them, my, my fellow representative, um, Maddie Kathleen, and I were in this class together, and we became friends there. And, but there, a handful of the people that were in there, at least seven or eight, are now in my AP English, senior English class. And they, all of them, had their iPods out during writing, <laughs> not caring. It's, it's no one takes it seriously. Um, and I had fun sometimes, because I wrote something just for fun, and it was interesting. Um, but. I was, all of us were really frustrated about the fact that we could have been doing something better. We could have been out taking that other AP class. Um, because a lot of the kids in writing were really driven and have now, in, after it, have proven to be very, very driven students and talented students. And I know some of them are amazing writers. And they didn't care during writing. I can, I can totally, I'm, I 100% support the get writing being done away with. There were a lot of people that were <coughs> tested out, but there were a lot of people who didn't. I didn't test out. I didn't know testing out was an option. Um, and yeah, there was those people who have been um, singled out as, uh, as their teachers are comment commenting to you that they didn't need to be in writing. I can assure you there are many, many more who do not need to be in writing. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Moore. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's I have two points I want to make. I mean, the first is that I think if, if, we, if we base sort of a freshman curriculum <laughs> on whether or not how many students are paying attention or yeah. are happy to be in that class, <laughs> so we'd have to eliminate the entire <laughs> thing. Um, I think the other point I have to make about this change, I think I really do have the concern that if you don't teach writing, um, people may not learn writing. And I think it's a really basic fundamental skill. I mean, there's as has been pointed out here, there's a reason why we keep teaching writing at all levels of education, starting, starting in preschool and working our way up to graduate school. You know, it, um, it's because it's a hard, hard skill to do it. And it it's really difficult to organize your thoughts in a way that says what you mean to other people in that sort of very concrete form of written words. And so I'm really concerned that, that by sort of saying we don't value this in, in, in the same way. And, and it may be that the, the curriculum needs a change, that maybe writing needs to be taught better. But I think the, the, the risk that this runs is in saying, well, we're not going to teach writing anymore. We're going to sort of let you, for example, give your history papers with your current writing skills. No. Or give you, well, but I think if I'm a, I, I know, if, I mean, again, anecdotally and also from experience that no matter how much if you're, if you're teaching a biology class and you try to grade the writing, you, you know, you're also going to be working pretty hard on the biology. And it's, it's a split focus. And again, there's a real question as to how much people invest in the writing part of their biology essays. Um, so I think that's a real concern. But I also am perfectly happy to say, you know, give this a try. But and I understand the difficulty of this is when you're implementing a change as from the point of view of the teachers and the administration, it's very important for it to be successful. You have to be fully committed to it. But at the same time, I really hope that people will be able, while being fully committed to it so it can be successful, also 
try to maintain a little perspective to critique it and see if it is actually achieving the goals that um, that we all have for it. Um, because I th think otherwise we're really likely to run into the, well probably the problem our current system is, which we have this change and maybe and it certainly wasn't working as well as we'd hope. And um, you know, and then you go along until you reach a point where all of a sudden you make this major change and then do this again and so <laughs> on. Then I really hope that for, uh, the administration and the um, teachers will, while being committed to the change and trying to execute it as well as possible, will also be able to step back and sort of say, well, you, you know, whether or not it's actually working or not. You know, just because you're a shooter doesn't mean you should always shoot. If I could let the superintendent respond. And I, I think that's actually very true, and that's why the English department has come up with this proposal, because they don't feel that what we have currently is working very well. Um, so they're looking to infuse the writing into the regular English course for ninth grade. Right, and like I said, I think that I can see how that could work, but I also could see how it could fail to work, that people could just sort of end up writing at their level, because if you're not working at writing, as you know, I mean, all I know is you tend to work at the thing you think you're working at. But I'm, I'm indicating it's not just biology or social studies. We are teaching writing in the English course. Well, yes, it's reading and writing. Course. Yes. But all the different stuff. Because in the writing class, they read stuff and write about it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Same thing. Uh, Ms. Duvall? Well, I, I agree very much with, with Howard, um, with Mr. Moore, what he's saying. And I don't understand. Um, our student representative said that they didn't understand that he could opt out. Um, why don't we just, you know, push more people to taking the test to opt out and it, having more than just opting out, but being able to see where people <coughs> fall in it? Because the, when I took writing in college, and it wasn't in the freshman that they caught, it was a more advanced class that they made you take, there are a lot of different styles that you just don't approach in different classes. I mean, when I mean, I don't un understand why we would need to learn all of them, but I think that they should know them. I would, my understanding is that four years ago when um, Dylan was taking freshman writing, it was not an option at that point. The option has developed more recently uh, because of the number of uh, English teachers and the number of students, and we were trying to find a way that those students who were really well grounded in writing would not have to take the writing course because we also had large classes and therefore it became an option. Are we not going to have the writing course at all or are we still going to have a writing course the for writing, the kids that are identified that need to still stay on that track? The writing is going to be incorporated in the Regular so we're not course. going to have a writing course because some per kids say we are not going to have a writing course. Okay. Well, some correct. kids I think actually need that writing course. They need to be able to strengthen those skills because when you are grading biology or grading anything else, or when you are writing it from the student's point of view, the quality of your work depends on your ability to communicate that effectively, and. Writing classes teach you the different styles that you need, and I'm not sure that within a curriculum and you're reading, you know, the Jungle Book or whatever you're reading and you write something about it, that you're going to approach all the different styles. And I do think that the emphasis, uh, I don't want to see people like Dylan, me, I could have passed it, opted out on it, that's not the thing, but my daughter might have more of a, of a difficult time. Um, there are people that do, and, that I, and, and they would tell you they do not want to take the writing we're, we're not also. doing this on basis of whether students like writing or want to be in a writing course or not. Well, this, was, this was a department decision of the English teachers at the high school who saw a better way of using their resources and a better way of strengthening the English program in general and specifically being able to have more time for those students who need help in writing. And I, I frankly have a great deal of faith in the English department at the high school. I have met with them. I think we are very strong in that area, and I am absolutely sure that they're not looking to create something that will make our uh, students poorer writers, uh, just the opposite. I think they're looking to make all of our students better at what it is they're doing, whether it's writing or having opportunities to have other elective courses. 
Well, can want? there be a time to follow up on and, and to, to look at the, the efficacy of it? I'm absolutely I mean, sure. Are we going to like English, build into it? I'm absolutely sure the English department is always looking at, as every other department is, what's working and what isn't. They determine what we have now isn't working. That's why they have this proposal for a change. So I'm sure that that will be part of it, yes. Mrs. Minnick, you had a follow-up question? I wanted to make a motion that we approve the request to change for dropping the writing requirement from the high school graduation requirements. So th there's been a motion made and seconded. Is there further discussion on the motion? Okay. Hearing none, I would um, uh, ask all those in favor to say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Okay. Hearing none, the. Um, the motion carries. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry, Dylan, it was four years too late oh, for you. My sister will be so happy. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda, um, uh, we have actually a couple of back-to-back um, uh, -back, uh, votes uh, that are related, um, and it concerns um, giving the superintendent authorization to submit a statement of interest form uh, to the Massachusetts School Building Authority for funding of needed roof repairs to two of our elementary schools under the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program. And we're joined this evening by David Pomerantz, who is the city's director of central services. And he can describe for you um, <coughs> the two projects at Ryan Road and Leeds and uh, why uh, this program would be an excellent uh, an excellent way for us to save significant funds, uh, borrowing costs in, in, in getting these roof projects done. So, Mr. Pomerantz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, if it's been a little chilly in here, I just checked with my staff about 15 minutes ago. There's an air damper stuck, um, so it is resolved. So, uh, you should be a lot warmer for the rest of the evening. Um, again, thanks for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Uh, what I'd like to talk with you about are two uh, large and critical capital improvement projects that Central Services is currently working on. Those projects do involve, as the mayor said, uh, potential funding from the Mass School Building Authority. And related to that potential funding, I'm here this evening to discuss and ask for your vote to which would authorize the superintendent to file with the MSBA the statements of interest, uh, which would help us in getting on an invitation list to hopefully secure funding to help us with those capital improvements. <coughs> For a little background, uh, we're talking about two roofing projects, one at Leeds and one at Ryan Road. Uh, both the roofs, uh, as I explained in the background information with your packets, uh, Leeds roof was put on in 91 when the building was expanded and renovated. Uh, Ryan Road was put on in 1989. They're both at the end of their useful lifespan. Um, these projects have appeared on the city capital uh, improvement request list and rotation on the five-year plan for a number of years now. And because of their scale and obviously competing demands, we have not yet secured capital funding. They're on for this year as well, and we'll, we'll see what happens. That said, we also do have the option, uh, MSBA uh, a few years ago started in what's called the Accelerator Repair Program for schools, which provides money for districts uh, for things such as roofs, windows, doors, and boilers, uh, not just putting on large additions or building whole new $55 million elementary buildings. Uh, this program, uh, it's an invitation only program. Uh, there's a rather complex uh, entry process that you have to follow. We have submitted uh, electronically the sort of core of the two statement of interest packages. They were submitted last Friday. And the final hard copies with votes from both the school committee and the city council uh, are due by November, uh, February 28th. Um, what will happen is uh, if the Northampton is invited to participate, uh, we would then put, be put on basically an 18-month clock to work with MSBA, uh, secure engineering services working with their staff, develop uh, construction documents and bid documents, go out to bid, do the work, and close out the projects for both buildings in 18 months. Um, 
the real plus here, and my staff was talking to MSBA last week about this, the real plus is that based on existing and current district parameters, we could be looking at funding from MSBA in the state approaching 56% of the cost of the projects. Now, we have had extensive roofing analysis work done of both Leeds and Ryan. We're looking at removing and replacing about 47,000 square feet of roofing at uh, Ryan, <coughs> excuse me, and about 28,000 square feet at Leeds. Budget estimates we have right now are putting the cost for those two projects at about $1.1 million. So 56% of that covered by the state uh, would be tremendous for the city. Um, so what I am um, asking for tonight from you is to think about this project and your support uh, and in taking a vote which would authorize the superintendent to submit the SOIs uh, in hard copy by next Friday the 28th. Does anyone have questions for Mr. Pomerantz? This is Minnick. Did you have a fun time in January when I wasn't here at the meeting? <laughs> Since I seem to be monopolizing this one, I'm sorry. Um, questions are, what um, would you be then borrowing, would you be borrowing the money for the project and using the 56 or whatever percent that they give back uh, to pay, on, pay down the loan? Is, and so we would have a loan still for the remaining 40 some odd percent, 30, whatever 40 percent, or? Mr. Pomerantz. Uh, no. Uh, so this would, the money trying to cover it out of capital improvements? SBA, we'd be looking at uh, the way it's scheduled now to do this work on a multi-year basis. Uh, so, for example, the Ryan Road project is broken out over five years hmm. at about 150000 per year uh, if we can get the capital money. So where that money would come from it would depend on what the capital improvements process determines. But if we get the, are successful with the MSBA money, uh, that money is, is just contributed to the city towards the overall construction cost of the project. I, so I so, misunderstood. I so I think you said you had to finish the project in 18 months. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, right. and so we for a for a project of that size on the order, even our share, um, you know, is going to be approaching 400 plus thousand. We may in fact bond that yes. amount, um, and uh, so we would do that. At, as part of our capital plan, and so we would have borrowed money then. We would, we okay. would, we would have to. We would most likely borrow our share of that, okay. um, right. of the of our forty. So the project could 40 be done years. all at once rather than spaced over five years. You would be doing. Yeah, that would yeah. be the goal. I mean, okay, it's, so I don't think from a even from a install perspective, it makes it's probably makes so sense to just do one good. section at a time over five years. Which brings me to my second question, which is. Um, what is the likelihood that you could get a deal from a roofing contractor if you could commit to both projects? Well, we are applying for both projects. I understand we have to that, it individually. but um, that was my other question, I'll is have you talked to MSBA enough to have a sense of how favorably they would look at both of these projects or either of these projects? I mean, do you feel like we are likely to be awarded an invitation for both of these projects? We're submitting both. Uh, there are some districts, for example, Springfield, uh, in 2012, they had seven schools on the list that they were invited for. So it, it really depends um, how much money is available, uh, who else is competing for the money, and there's a whole analytical process that MSBA uses to determine, you know, are they going to fund both of them, or are they going to look at Ryan Road and say, we'll do that one and reapply for leads. We have no idea. So you have no idea about no. that. But then the other question was, if they did fund both, or if they did send you the invitation for both and were willing to fund both, is there any likelihood that doing both projects at the same time could yield cost savings from a contractor? Or do you have to bid the two projects separately? They would be bid separately. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Zahowski. Perhaps you could um, refresh my memory for the <coughs> submission or the, uh, uh, the proposal. Uh, were there other schools that we were looking at as far as roof repair, or was it just the Leeds and Ryan Road? Further down the road, Ed, um, as we get further, let's say years three, four, and five on this five-year cycle, and of course we're doing a five-year cycle every year, 
um, Leeds and Ryan are the most critical ones. Uh, you start going out beyond three, four years, Bridge Street's coming up. Um, Jackson and this building and the high school, we're looking at really repairs only for the next eight to 10 years, but they're gonna start showing up on the capital list probably years four and five as they work their way up. So Bridge would be next uh, in about three years, uh, but right now Leeds and Ryan, they're, they're critical. It seemed to me that we were speaking about maybe looking at, I, I remember two, but possibly three, when the, the idea of this uh, application to the state was being uh, discussed. Was there any uh, thought of putting the uh, Bridge Street one into this proposal as well to get it out of the way, knowing that we're eventually going to have to do it and the likelihood of reapplying in two or three years may not yield an opportunity to cash in on this, you know, this this help from the state right we, we didn't get any indication one way or the other from MSB I, MSBA on that as far as doing three or four at this point um, but because we're also looking at bridge bringing out three years and it's in substantially good enough shape with repairs only required uh, that's why we focus to increase our chances with just going with Leeds and Ryan did you have a follow-up miss minute um, okay and um, so, uh, and we have to take each one of these votes separately, and there's a whole uh, form of language that has to be uh, included as part of that um, uh, vote. Um, and then we'll, and we have a similar, tomorrow night we'll be doing the same thing before the um, city council, because they also have to counter vote this, uh, because it's a, we're essentially committing um, ourselves for these improvements to the city property. So, um, uh, well, there's language in the agenda, um, but it's part of a longer, um, it's part of a longer, yes. There were two separate documents. Yes, exactly. So, um, so the things that get submitted so to the state. What happens is, as long it, it just it will just need to be this longer. If someone could make the motion that uh, that we would, well, the motion would be that we Which that one? the school committee approve Authorized. each one approves the language of the um, the authorization that's in front of you. So we don't have to read the whole thing, but the clerk will put all that language in the minutes because it has to appear verbatim in the minutes. Um, and those minutes have to be signed and certified. That's what we're turning in to the state. Um, so, so how do you want it to go? Because I'll move the motion however you want. Just, that it just what's Never listed on the agenda. Yeah. 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 Authorized. Superintendent. Um, yeah, what's on the agenda. Yeah. In the yeah. So I so I would okay. read what's on the agenda, but then reference the ex, uh, agreeing to the further language that's in the uh, you know expanded, that that be incorporated into the minutes as part of the motion. Okay. Okay. So I move to authorize the superintendent to submit a statement of interest form to the Mass School Building Authority, MSBA, for funding of needed roof repairs to R.K. Finn Ryan Road Elementary School under the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program and agreeing to the other language that's necessary. Okay. It's listed in the attached form. Post yeah. Posted right. in the attached letter. 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 Okay. And then she'll attach those letters. Well, she's going to actually put that in the body of the minutes. So right. we'll be, this is, that language is what we're voting Below on. Letter. Okay. Um, so is there a second on second. that? Second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion on that vote? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, so now we would need a, a, a second motion on the Leeds project. Um, I make a mo motion to authorize the superintendent to submit a statement of interest form to the MSBA for funding of needed roof repairs to Leeds Elementary School under the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program and agreeing to the further language within the context of what the superintendent writes. Okay. The body of the link. Okay. So um, again, similar uh, similar motion. Any discussion on that? Seconded. Oh, seconded by Ms. Minnick. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Okay. Um, if I just might um, applaud David yes. while he's here and Greg Cohan 
for their work in looking into this and getting us all set up and doing all the necessary paperwork. They did a terrific job. I have participated in this program three years ago in another school district. It's a lot of work, <coughs> and they did a great job. So thank you very much, and thank thanks you, to Greg. Thank you Pass it on to Greg. Good job. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks, same, for same, uh, thanks for fixing the heat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, that, okay, so now we'll move on to the um, uh, business manager's report as well as the personnel report and uh, those will be handled this evening uh, by the superintendent. Yes, I'm, I'm many people this evening. Yes, <laughs> playing many roles. Um, the business manager's report has been sent to you. Basically, he's outlined the work that we've begun to do with regard to the FY15 budget. He speaks to the fact that the governor's budget, which was announced on January 20th, um, I'll only allocated an additional $70,325 in Chapter 70 funding. That is the governor's budget. I would remind you that there's a House budget and then the Senate budget. Um, so those are yet to be seen and um, what I'm hearing is that they're looking to do a little better than that in Chapter 70 funds, um, but I'm not holding my breath for an awful lot more. It's just the penalty we pay for doing a good job. Yes, I think that's probably true. Um, the mayor presented his budget to a joint budget meeting of the city council and the school committee and I was pleased to see that all the school committee members were there. I think that was terrific. That was January 30th. And the budget process itself for FY15 is being compressed um, as a result of the changes in the city charter. Um, We've already taken care of the one contract we had this evening. Um, there's a financial statement attached. And then when we look at the capital plan for FY15, um, the business manager has again reiterated um, what was proposed. And I think we will hear on that uh, in early to mid-March, what's been approved. And then he speaks to the items that were approved for the FY14 year as well goes on to describe the, um, the budget process and the timeline that we've established. Um, I believe he means the FY15 budget process. Uh, I think that was a typo. And um, I would remind you, as I will again under my report, that we do have our first um, school committee budget meeting next Thursday evening, uh, the 27th here. Um, at that time, we'll be presenting um, information with regard to proposals for the FY15. Um, other than that, um, there is a personnel report um, that um, he's listed new hires, separations, retirements, promotions, and transfers. You have that as well. So if you have any questions on either of those, perhaps I could answer them. Um, I have a question about the video surveillance equipment at the high school. What is that used for? What word? It's in the, um, what is the plan for the video for? For the FY15? Yes. Yeah, what we're looking to do is to have, um, I, I, I don't want to say too much <laughs> on camera, but basically we're looking to have better security for our high school. Okay. Um, than we currently have. And I'd be happy to talk with you further okay. later. That'd be great. <laughs> Are there other questions regarding the uh, business manager report? Okay. Um, <coughs> turning to the personnel report. Uh, okay. I believe that's uh, in everyone's packet, uh, yeah. including the new hire separations, retirements, and promotions and transfers. I don't know if there are any questions about that report. Okay, so um, I will now um, move on to your regular report, which is the superintendent's report. Okay, now I get to be me. Um, I want to talk, first of all, about the park testing situation. And I had no idea we'd have a parent showing up this evening to talk about it. Um, but it's been on the agenda um, for the last meeting, which was postponed. But I do want to talk about that. Um, the MCAS testing is being phased out, um, although a final decision will not be made on that for two more years. Um, they're piloting 
park, which would be the replacement if the State Board of Education agrees with that. And what they've come up with is, is about, um, uh, I have the statistics here, but a number of students across Massachusetts are being asked to take the pilot test, basically 81,000 students, which is 8% of the state's total public school enrollment. Um, and the word went out, and um, it was originally an invitation, but that got changed um, rather rapidly. And um, for Northampton, it meant that five out of our, five out of the six schools would have um, two classes um, in each school being asked to take the park test. Um, originally. I um, agreed that we needed to do that for the same reason that all the other superintendents did. Um, number one, it would give an opportunity for our students to take a computerized test, which the park is, and whatever test they um, eventually decide upon will be. I'd have no doubts about that. So that would give our students an opportunity to try out um, taking a test on uh, a computer, um, which is a, a skill, obviously. Um, and secondly, it would give our teachers an opportunity to see what types of questions would be on the park test, which I think would give them a leg up. So um, I agreed with that, um, as did just about all the other superintendents who were asked in the state. Um, I think I made a mistake on that. And I made a mistake because I didn't realize all that would be involved in actually getting that off the ground. Um, I didn't have a clear understanding of the amount of time involved in setting up the testing, which is basically being done um, by our director of IT and um, our director of special education and our um, director of curriculum and assessment. And the number of hours and weekends that it's taken them to um, set up both in terms of um, programming in the students' names, uh, in doing um, some of the, um, uh, some of the uh, training, uh, both by uh, telephone and also by webinars, um, and actually going to all-day meetings and then coming back and having to train the principals in each of those buildings and the teachers who would be doing this when we don't have a lot of time for training in this district. So that was one of the things that really took me by surprise in terms of that amount of time. Um, it also became clear that we do not have a lot of computers in our schools. Um, and with the factor that if students need accommodations, they are untimed tests. So you cannot move another section into the computer lab and disturb the kids who are still working so you have to expand the number of days that you're going to have the testing staggered over, which runs up against the window established by the state to do the testing, which runs up and crosses over the MCAS testing. Mm -hmm. Now, there was an opportunity to take those students out who were doing MCAS and pilot and not have them do <coughs> MCAS. The problem with that is we're a level three school district with two of our schools being level three. If we have no scores for MCAS in those particular grade levels, then we don't have a shot at getting out of uh, level three. So that didn't seem to be an option for us. Um, we also have, um, along with that, the DESE has come up with a number of initiatives um, for us, for school districts, for teachers, for administrators, um, from everything from DDMs, which we've talked about before, um, to retail, to um, special education directives, to uh, there's eight or nine different ones that are out there. And we're trying to do those things as well as trying to do some of the things that Northampton needs to have. Um, I've never seen a staff, uh, meaning teachers, support staff, and administrators work so hard trying to play catch up and trying to do a good job. And what it comes down to is we can't do a great job doing everything. When we looked at the priorities, uh, this fell to the bottom because A, we're not going to be getting any results, so we won't know how our kids did 
anyway. Um, it is a pilot. There are a lot of other schools doing it. Uh, and there's a lot of other states doing it. So what I would, and, and I haven't mentioned um, the fact that we over-test kids. Um, our parents did that this evening. And I haven't mentioned it for the very fact that that is not a factor that would be considered at the State Department level as right. being valid. What I'm trying to do is build a hardship case. So what I'm asking this evening is if there is board support for um, a letter to be written to the commissioner requesting that be, we be exempt from the pilot testing this year. I'm asking that for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm not going to be here past June 30th, and I also am not a resident of Northampton. You are. And I don't want to do something that you feel is not in your best interest in the, in the interest of your community. That's why I'm asking you whether you would like me to do this. Um, there will not be any other superintendent doing it. I will tell you that. And I would also say that I'm not sure what the response will be. I'm concerned that if the commissioner approved the request, then there would probably be other superintendents who would like to have that done. And that is certainly not something that the state would like to have happen. I think there may be consequences or repercussions coming out of it, although I've not been able to get anyone to answer what those might be. Um, I think it's possible it could be grant funding as an example. Um, perhaps there would be some compromise that would be proposed, although I'm not sure what that would be either. So I wanted to bring it this evening and um, have some discussion on where you think we might go with this. The other part of it I would also say is I do have a parent meeting with me tomorrow um, and I have heard from principals that there is active parent group um, basically indicating that um, they do not wish to have their children take the park test and the students will not be doing that. They'll opt their own kids out. So, discussion time. This is Minnick. Uh, you mentioned that you've had some central office staff that have already put in considerable time on this. How? How much, uh, not how much time, but I mean, how close to being ready are they? Well, I didn't dare for us not to be ready. Yeah. So we're up to date where we should be at this point. Um, I believe it's tomorrow that our director of IT is going to a full day training. And on the 27th, <coughs> our director of um, curriculum and assessment is going on a full day training. So we're still in the queue because I didn't dare not do that. Um, but I think that um, the time element only increases. It doesn't get less as we go through this. And, um, and I, I, I'm trying to, how is it, that, I'm trying to remember what it was. Was it Common Core or was it this park stuff that states were asked to participate and it, it, they had to get a certain number of people to do? Right. There are 46 states participating in the Common Core at the moment. And this, this test would be, um, not all the states are looking at PARC. I believe some of the states are looking at another test. Um, but I think there's 13 in this group, although I might be mistaken in the uh, looking at PARC. But I, so am I correct, though, that there was funding attached to? There's no funding. There was no funding attached to any not, of this. Not I mean, to I this. there was money to the state or money to the districts for well, there's no funding per... To pay for this. I, no. No, I understand no. that, but I thought that we were getting some funds from... I believe that this is that part of the RTTT. Yes, yes, that, yes, maybe that's what it was. And I knew there was that's something. That's what I think they yes. might come up with as That's a, a race to the top. Right. Yes, okay. race to the top nice. grant, which we do participate in. This is our last year of it. Uh, it was a four-year grant. Um, and um, we have been using those funds. So if it's close to the end, then they Which can't was really my get question. back. Well, um, <laughs> that's 
that's my concern. <laughs> my question, um, actually, which was I was going to ask, was going to be about race to the top, mm -hmm. and um, do you? I kind of remember it a little bit as Miss Minnick did too that we got stuff. So I'm, I'm assuming it's a grant that we got for four years for participating in, participating in Race to the Top. Was the park? We, did we? Well, did that come hand in hand? It's like you're on Race to the Top, so you have to do this. I mean, is that why everybody said yes? Did were the schools, the superintendents that said yes, were they participating in also in the Race to the Top? No, it's some great, great schools. Great Mark coming in and giving us a whole yeah, but some schools on it, but we didn't know. What some schools did not participate in the race to the top who will be participating in park. However, what I think at the federal level is there were a lot of strings to the race to the top grants. And I believe that this was one of the strings. So this is a str that's what I was thinking, that this is a yeah. string. And that's what I think. Okay. Because the federal government put all these strings out on that okay. um, to the states and the states in terms to the school districts. And right. I think this was one of them. Not park per se. Okay. You mentioned you thought there might be a compromise. Do you, I mean, well, if I were the commissioner, I probably wouldn't want to. A, I wouldn't want to approve it, and B, I probably wouldn't want a lot of publicity on it. And if there's a way that um, they I mean, might be able to come up with something else, do they have the latitude else? to extend the deadline so that it's not as much, so that we can make it work with the number of computers that we have, or do they have? I mean, no, they, they cannot extend. That would not be part of it. Yeah. As a follow-up, could I ask? Could they? Would they be? Could there? Would it help if they reduced the number of folks who we were testing, or the number of mm -hmm. grades, or if they shrunk that universe? Well, Is that I, a I would kind of be happy if they took our level three schools out of it. Mm -hmm. I think that would help tremendously. Okay. Um, so I think there might be some things that they could offer in return, what they might be and whether they would do it, I don't know. Um, and just to be clear, the, the concern with the level three is that there's a lot of work going on to already. try to be prepared for MCAS and analyze exactly. MCAS scores to try to address the level three issue. So exactly. it creates an additional burden to then it have does. to focus on this other test um, exactly okay <clears throat> uh, so so the letter or whatever request we would submit would that request say um, please approve us from or please approve us to exempt out of this program or would it say um, do we have options to do that or what are our options kind of thing instead of just asking for the exemption? I would ask to be withdrawn from the part <laughs> testing <laughs> process see what their answer is. Um, I've talked with a couple of people in the department, talked mm -hmm. with number three and number two. Number one hasn't talked to me yet. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I'd sort of be interested to see what the answer might be. I don't know, but I'm happy to do what the board would like. Mr. Ball? Well, I just wanted to say on a personal note that if, if my child were in the class, I would probably feel like I would want to opt out because I don't think that it's a, a, a good use of their time when there's so much more that they can be doing. Um, and I also do understand and do remember the business manager coming in and, and discussing the race to the top, but um, I, I would support it reluctantly, only reluctantly because, I mean, we did say yes and, and everything else, but I would take my daughter out of it. I mean, I would just say, you know, and, w and what can we do at that point? I mean, if, if all the parents just opted out anyway. But I do support you. And I'll make the motion if you want. I don't care. Uh, Mr. Zahowski, did you have comments? Um, yeah, o only to, you know, reiterate what uh, uh, Mr. Ball just said. You know, we did make a commitment to uh, go forward with this. I, I remember it being brought to us from the, the former superintendent. And uh, we didn't have lengthy discussion on it. I think. Had we had an opportunity for parents and had a forum for the community to kind of weigh in, it may have really helped um, in further that discussion whether or not uh, we were to participate. Because I think, as I recall, you know, we had a very brief um, discussion on it. It sounded pretty good, but we didn't know what it was about. I mean, um, we knew park testing was coming down the road. Um, an opportunity to be a pioneer or a front runner to understand it at a different level than other people or other communities 
to kind of have that one leg up and get a lot of the leg work done so that when we finally took it for the first year, we would kind of be be a little, be a veteran at it um, and not be a mean fight and being, you know, kind of wandering through. Okay. Um, so one, I'm wondering if um, we don't go through with it, eventually if it does come down the pike and we're kind of thrust into it, will we, will we be ready for it um, and, and do an adequate job? And um, yeah, the other part is that, um, you know, it, I feel like um, maybe there was, I don't think there's a lot of other schools out there jumping at the opportunity to be in the program, but maybe there was a, it was a, a, a selection process and, you know, we were welcomed in and now another school didn't have the opportunity. So there was at one point where we thought it was a good idea because we would be able to participate in it and understand it better. And there's another school out there now that may not have that opportunity that missed it because we took that spot and now we need to have that opportunity. So, um, you know, those are some of the concerns I have. Um, had, I, had I understood it the way I understand it tonight, I, I probably um, would not have supported it. Um, and I would have uh, asked that, um, you know, we kind of let others go out there first and then we'll talk to area communities and let them explain to us where we have to watch out and mm -hmm. then implement when the time is is mm -hmm. right. Um, and again, as you said, I mean, it, it, it's a couple years out yet, and we don't even know if Massachusetts is going to accept this test and use it. And um, and so it, it may be off or not. So I, I do have reservations. Yeah. Let me explain two different things. First of all, um, the Race to the Top um, grants provided different amounts of money for school districts and you received quite a bit of money over four years. So I don't doubt or I do not second guess why you approved it. Um, in the district I was in, it meant 45,000 over four years for five different districts. It was a nothingness, we did, not, we did not approve it. We didn't want the strings for so little money. Um, if we were looking at much larger sums, such as Northampton, I'm sure we would have approved it. So I'm not second guessing that at all. Um, the Race to the Top grant does not specify in it park testing. That was an option that was provided to superintendents um, by the state this year. I made the decision on that and I think that was a mistake. Although I have to say that there were only two other superintendents to my knowledge who at the time when it was so called an invitation said they didn't wish to participate and they had to show hardship in order not to. Uh -huh. And that was at the very beginning of the process, which probably goes back to September, October time period. So my recollection is that the Race to the Top grant has a lot of strings tied to it. Was this a string? You don't know if this was a string or not? Specifically whether park testing was a string, I do not know. I suspect it might be. Okay. And I suspect if there is any consequence, and maybe in terms of the funding from the race to the top, perhaps there are other consequences that I'm not even able to guess what they might be. But they might not consequence us also if we do submit it as a hardship. Exactly. So that's why I'm looking to write it as a hardship and that's right. why I know the idea that students having more testing time is not one of the things they're going to consider. Right. Because all the students who are taking this will have that same issue. It's also possible that if um, there are some concessions that would help us out. It's also possible the answer will be no. We will not approve um, Northampton being withdrawn from the process. And then we're not withdrawn unless you wish to push it further. And I'm not sure you will or you won't. And I'm not sure I want to say what you do on television. Um, but it doesn't mean if you request it and it's denied that you're going to do it anyway. I'd like to make a motion to withdraw that, um, to take the superintendent's recommendation to write and request a hardship um, withdrawal from the park testing program. Second. Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded. Um, is there a further discussion on the motion? 
Hearing none, I'll ask uh, you to please vote. Uh, those in favor to vote aye. 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 Those opposed to vote no. Any abstentions? Okay, so the motion carry. Oh, excuse me. Was that an abstention? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was just a comment. I, I, so the motion carries unanimously. Go ahead. I'd just like to thank the superintendent for bringing this to us because I think this was a difficult, this was a conundrum. I think that there are things to be gained and also costs to the district, you know, of, the, of participating, and there may actually be gains and losses for a request not to. And so it's a difficult decision, but I respect your your wisdom and your your bringing it to us and offering us all of the background so that we could make this decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you for still going forth and getting everything ready in case they say no. Okay. okay. All right, so um, we'll- I have more. Oh, oh that's right, you uh, have more. <laughs> Never stops. I don't often <laughs> say that. Okay. I don't talk a lot. Um, I have a couple other items. They're really brief. As soon as I find them here, um, snow days. We've used all five that we've had. <laughs> uh -oh. So keep your fingers crossed. And um, right now, we would be getting out of school on Wednesday, June 25th, right. without any more snow days. Mm -hmm. The good news is we can't go past June 30th. Um, and I'm hopeful that this is the end. If it isn't, then obviously we need to wait further into the year, see how many days we have to make up, and then we have to talk about how we would make those up. And there's a variety of ways of doing it. So I don't want to get anyone upset at this point because right now we're okay. Um, but we have used all five, so we should recognize that. And we're not just, alone in that. Just one, so um, for, for people that are counting <coughs> at home, uh, how many more uh, school days are there actually until the 30th of June? I don't know. I don't so, have a calendar. I think it's three. more that I, week. I thought it was three. Three more? So, okay. Uh, we could potentially run three more days out and still get on to the June 30th. We could, or we could take a day of spring vacation, or we could run later during the school day. Uh, we could do a Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Those are options. <laughs> so those are things that we could talk about <laughs> Did that discussion occur after <laughs> the three yeah. oh, yeah. days at the end of the um, calendar? Probably not. <laughs> um, I want to see where we stand right now. I have one school that has a day to make up anyway uh, for another reason. So we seem um, to be getting slammed with those two-day type of snowstorms. We so, are. Uh, we are. We've got two of those. It's just yes. kind of unprecedented yeah, in we'll one year. More. So and, if, and we, if we should hit another one of those, I think mm -hmm. we'd really be in a tough spot. Yeah. So. Then we'll have to look at it and make some decisions on it. But I do think that uh, it's interesting because having been back here for 12 years, and 12 years I've never used all five days in any of those years. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. I've used four in some of them, but I've never used five. Um, secondly, um, some of the things we've been doing, the administrators have participated in a safety workshop, um, including tabletop exercises. And we had members of the police department, the fire department, and the safety response team join us. Um, and it was a really very productive meeting. Uh, and we will have some more of those scheduled. Um, what we're talking about is student and school safety. And the participation of all of us, um, if something were to happen that um, demanded our attention. So um, I um, applaud Karen. Um, Jarvis Vance for getting us all together and we will have some more of those meetings. We also held a training for administrators on how to do investigations within their schools when needed uh, with regard to inappropriate behavior. It could be students or adults or whatever, but how to do those investigations and also a discussion of the new law on gender identity and what that means for schools. Uh, I asked Donna McNichol, who is an attorney, um, to come and do that uh, for us. I've seen her do it with other groups and she did a nice job and um, I think the administrators felt very good about uh, what they learned during that. Um, just a reminder, budget meeting next Thursday here and a reminder also that Ginny Tate is coming to meet with us on March 19th. That was the finalized date on that, um, 7.30 to 9.30 here. And it will be a discussion of the roles and responsibilities of school committee members and superintendents. And that's all I have. 
Okay. Uh, so we have one more item on our agenda this evening, and that is an update on the superintendent search process. Um, and in accordance with the uh, uh, timeline uh, that was presented uh, to us by NESDEC back at the December 12th meeting, um, we are on schedule, and uh, part of the, um, so just to run through the schedule, the. Uh, the um, the next sort of piece in that is the naming of the superintendent screening committee, uh, and we of course had uh, announced and posted um, uh, uh, seeking folks to, to to volunteer to serve on that committee. Uh, the deadline was last Friday, uh, and uh, we received um, uh, we received uh, I think about 16 or 17 different applications. Um, had a chance to review them uh, uh, with the uh, vice chair, go through them. Um, we were um, trying to um, trying to make sure that we had the a balance between um, parents at all levels, staff uh, at all levels, representative of the all team, um, and so uh, I'm going to announce uh, the screening committee. You have a memo in front of you, and I'll just read it off uh, for the public. Um, and uh, so the uh, hereby appoint the following individuals to the superintendent screening committee. Uh, Gwen Agna, uh, who would be the representative of the alt team. Um, Alan Bloomgarden of Florence, he would be uh, NHS, he's an NHS parent. Uh, Sharon Carlson, uh, who is a, a JFK staff member as well as president of the Northampton Association of School Employees. Uh, John DeBartolo, uh, who is uh, uh, a JFK uh, and NHS parent. Um, Michael Gora, uh, who is uh, uh, he's, a, he's a school parent. Uh, he's also um, um, uh, on the board of the Northampton Education Foundation. Uh, uh, Pam Hanna, uh, representing the school committee. Uh, Tracy Herity, uh, who will be representing the NPS Central Office. Um, Janet Hicks, who is a NHS uh, a faculty member. Uh, she's also the SPED evaluation team leader at, at the high school. Uh, Millie uh, Jimenez, um, who is an elementary su uh, school support staff member at Jackson Street School. Uh, Marisa Mendoza, uh, who's an elementary school parent, uh, and then uh, chairing the committee, uh, Mr. Zahowski, um, the vice chair of the school committee. So that is the 11 member uh, committee, um, and uh, we will uh, be gathering that uh, committee together along with uh, NESDEC um, in the superintendent screening, uh, uh, in, the super in, in the principal's conference room here at JFK on Monday, February 24th. Um, and to begin that process. So NESDEC will work with the committee to get them up to speed on procedures, questions, set the interview schedule, um, and uh, we'll be off and running. Did you want to add anything more in terms of uh, uh, NESDEC and in applications? I think I, I may have uh, commingled the two. I think what you had intended me to report was that the deadline for superintendent applications was last mm -hmm. uh, was last Friday, mm -hmm. and that there have been a number of uh, applications mm -hmm. received. So exactly. That's, so that's good. Yes. Um, so we're on schedule, uh, and we're in line with the timeline. And the screening committee will get to work, and uh, with the hope that we will be um, they'll be presenting some uh, candidates to the full school committee uh, shortly. So. I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but I sat in on the meetings when the superintendents were questioned um, and were interviewed by the full board. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like a really quick, thrown together process. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if there's a way that we can set aside more time for that as an entire board, or if that's something this, the screening committee would help us to do. When you say thrown together, did it seem like a really, really quick process? Yes. You mean the evening seemed quick, or you mean the entire search process? The process of sure. um, deciding questions and who was going to ask which sure. questions yes. and what questions were going yes. to be asked. Yes, yeah, so um, the superintendent can uh, go through that. Uh, mm -hmm. So do you want to just walk through the... Um, well, basically, um, I too had not seen it done that way exactly. 
And I think what NASDAQ has in mind is that um, depending on the number of candidates, there would be a candidate per day, evening, uh, not everyone at the same night. Um, so if you have three candidates, there'd be three different dates um, for the candidates to meet with the public as well as to meet with the school committee during the evening. And then on the last night of those interviews is where there'd be deliberation. So I think that's what they have in mind, but that will be something the screening committee um, we'll make a decision on, um, and I. Yeah, well, I can only ex uh, speak from past experience, and you know we've normally um, screened, or we've we've had our finalists come um, on one one day, and it's very hectic. You know, we ask a lot of our um, of our, our our front office staff to kind of mm -hmm. make things happen as they're moving throughout the district and trying not to bump into each other and um, I, th I think one of the reasons we do that is uh, simply for scheduling uh, trying to find three different nights uh, for everybody to come back not that it's not a very important uh, thing that we're doing it's probably the most important thing that a school committee can do as a higher superintendent um, but for scheduling we've tried to um, find a night where we can kind of get through them it's exhausting uh, for us, and it's more exhausting for the potential uh, candidates that are, that are coming, that's for sure. Um, uh, but with that said, I think your, your, your question had to do with the questions themselves in the interview. And we can certainly take a look at that. I, I do know that uh, the first time when we were out, uh, when I was on the committee looking to hire a superintendent, we did have a special meeting one evening where we really went through questions and we um, uh, did a lot of wordsmithing and uh, we came um, back after that evening and finalized the questions we were going to use. Mm -hmm. um, I can see where it may have felt like it was rushed last time and I think the reason for that simply was because we just done this process less than a year and a half yeah. ago. And a lot of the data that we had, we used again. <clears throat> we don't think that what we were looking for was much different uh, 18 months ago than it was, you know, uh, three months ago. So um, to, to move the process along, we, we use some of that old information. It's probably wise to take a look at the questions and make sure that they're in line with what we still want to ask and what we um, would like to get out of um, the, the candidates coming in that evening. And certainly we can take a look at that. Did I misinterpret your question? I thought you meant the fact that all three candidates were here on one evening. Um, well, I didn't ask that question specifically, oh, okay. but that was helpful at any rate. Um, my question was about the questions, and as as a member of the public sitting and watching the meeting, it was something that was decided very quickly, and it seemed disjointed. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that we didn't wait till the last minute to decide whether or not we were going to tweak the questions or we were going to stick to the ones that we had. So again, that the only reason so for yes, that, I believe, that answers. Is, you know, we did a lot of work on right. those questions about a year ago or a year and a half ago, and we felt comfortable using that. So that again, makes sense. However, um, I can see how that could be noted as just being rushed through finding something on the internet saying these are good. Well, no, I don't <laughs> no, no, that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I could add to that explanation, however, I would say that the open meeting law has just really found out a lot. Uh, maybe I should have said a lot of people. It certainly bums me out sometimes. And the fact of the matter is that we have to be having a discussion about what those questions look like in public, which then means that all of our interviewees know what our questions are mm -hmm. and have the chance to prepare for them. And there's no way around that except to just, you know, we can, we can have a general discussion and say, these are topics, issues that we would like to question candidates about, and some small group of people that's not a quorum of anything can then devise the questions, and then they can be assigned to people, and it will make it look rushed and like we don't know what we're doing, or like somebody else was making decisions out of the public. Gotcha. But that's the only way not to have the questions right out there. And maybe it's not a problem to have the questions right out there. Maybe that's what the open meeting law is designed to do, but. It's, it's very much of a balance with a lot of things these days. Uh, the whole process has to be public. Mr. Yeah. Moore. Yeah, I mean, to that point, I think, I think on balance, I think that um, 
I don't think it's that big of a disadvantage to have the candidates know what the questions are going to be. They still have to answer them. And um, compared to us not having a good discussion about what we want to ask and what we want to find out, what we're trying to find out with our questions, I think that's probably more important than whatever we may lose by whatever some sort of surprise value. <laughs> I, mean, I think in general they know what questions are going to be asked in general, whether or not they know the specific wording. I mean, they're applying for a job as a superintendent of schools. So, so they kind of know the gist. Um, but before they come here anyway, and so I don't think we lose all that much by giving them the specifics, but I think we do probably lose a lot if we haven't, you know, really had a good kind of discussion amongst ourselves in terms of what we what we're looking for, in a, which is quite what you're talking about when you're talking about the questions, is what you're looking for in a new superintendent, um, what you see as the qualifications of a new superintendent, and so on, and I think that's a discussion we should have, and I think we lose more by not having that discussion than we might lose by the other. Okay, so um, so that's where we are, uh, and we'll uh, try to keep you apprised of the progress of the uh, of the screening process, and um, and get, keep you updated on that. So, I I don't believe we have any new business scheduled for not for tonight. I just would note uh, for the public that um, again, as I just noted, the superintendent screening committee meets on Monday, uh, the twenty fourth at seven p.m. here at JFK. Um, our next school committee meeting is actually February 27th, and it's Thursday. Uh, and again, this is the uh, second, uh, this is the special second meeting relative to uh, budget. Um, and then again, we return to our regular um, uh, meeting on March 13, 2014, 715 at JFK. I would now entertain a motion to adjourn the school committee. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, okay, the motion carries and the meeting of the school committee is adjourned.